a painting from the evil book of hours from about 1430. Academics would say technically it's, it's not Viking. These are tribes that were not. Okay, these are German helmets. What are the spikes for? Oh, they put the helmets on their head, they'd bend over and run into people. That's how they fought wars. Pre-revolutionary document from 1774. It's the extracts from the boats and proceedings of the American Continental Congress. A couple is at the pawn shop to sell something really exciting. These are the trunks worn by Titus O'Neill at Money in the Bank when he won the tag team championship belt. If you're gonna have a piece of Titus memorabilia, this is probably the piece that you want to have. He definitely has history right here in Florida. Titus played college football here in Florida and he even played for the Jacksonville Jaguars before he was a wrestler. Are they worth anything? You do gotta get these authenticated. Chum asks for an offer. But where did you guys get these? From a buddy of mine shortly after the show. About eight years, seven years? Yeah. Oh, how much are you looking to get? Uh, 1800 Are they worth that? It's kind of a one-of-a-kind item. About 800 What about 14 I think 1000 bucks would probably be the max we could go. Thousand bucks? Do you think that's money in the bank? Think it's money in the bank. You have a deal. Right. And you sure this is like real and everything? Yeah, but we do have to get them authenticated. Who's meeting us for dinner? Titus gives out the history of his shorts and gets them back by treating Rick to an expensive dinner. Penn State University Orange Bowl ring from 1973. We're remodeling our house. I think it's worth 1500 I just love championship rings. I'd like to get 1500 Might have to take a closer look? I got a problem with this ring. Engraving's been removed on it. This is a cool ring and the price is reasonable. It's illegal for me to buy or sell anything when any identifying mark. It's like buying a car without a VIN number. You have to look at it from my position. I can't take it. Okay. All right, dude. Didn't do nothing. I mean, this is definitely some money right here. I really want to make a couple thousand dollars a day. It's a couple of items. I didn't know exactly what they were. The prized possession, I believe, is this gold Viking bracelet and the things I had to trade for it. Rick surveys the item. These are more like fragments of something. Yeah, that was a brooch. Obviously some kind of jewelry. I mean, the problem is I don't know what it is. Are really intriguing. This is really neat. I think it's what's left of a copper bracelet. And did you have an idea what you wanted for this stuff? Uh, I was thinking around a thousand bucks. Rick calls an expert to examine the item. Well, I think it's, the academics would say technically it's, it's not Viking. These are tribes that were not. This, this particular piece caught my eye. Um, this is part of a bracelet. Um, okay. it's, it's a copper alloy. I have to defer on that. It's not worth a lot, but it's certainly outside of my range. Auction estimates on it would be something between, you know, 6,000 to 8,000 British pounds, which would be, and I'll, I'll leave it to you to translate. After knowing the actual price, the deal takes a different approach. Okay, these right here, I want to give you 150 bucks for it. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of about 400. I'll go, I'll go $200 on it. If you can do that, you can do it 300. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll do 250. You sure that's the best you can do? All right. All right, we got to deal 250. The owner of the pawn shop Rick is in tells him he has something that would blow his socks off. And Rick is very curious as to what it really is. This is what you've been looking for all your life. All right. Ready? Ready. Yeah. He opens the small box. The seller then tells him what it was, a piece of the Titanic. Well, it is a piece of rusty metal. Remember that really famous ship that would never sink? Oh, the Titanic. That's part of the Titanic's hull. The man explained how they also came about this piece, explaining to Rick that it was initially taken out of the main ship for the experiment. So is it for sale? Everything's for sale, mate. You know that. I'll sell anything. How much you want for it? This, this is a gem. I've had an offer on this a few days ago. If you can beat it, you can buy it off me. How much? How much do you reckon? That's a number I have no idea on. That is going to cost you one point. Two million pounds. Okay, so what else do you have? <laughs> <laughs> what point? Come on, that's a good piece. You'll make a fortune out of that. Out of my price range. What do you got in like rock and roll stuff? I'm not dropping 1.2 million pounds on a chunk of metal, unless it's a really big chunk of gold. <laughs> okay, these are German helmets. What are the spikes for? Oh, they put the helmets on their head, they'd bend over and run into people. That's how they fought wars. You can tell this helmet is from early World War I because it's made out of leather. Later in the war, the Germans were running out of supplies, so they started making them out of felt, and that's how you can tell this is later in the war. The helmets were from World War one and Rick was curious about them. Expert Paul took a close look, explaining that one was an enlisted airsats helmet and the other was a decorated officer's helmet. Pointed out that helmets like these were rare, as the leather often decays over time. You can see where it looks like there's been some repairs done on this. It looks like it's been restitched. Very common for the stitching to, to come undone. 
Hall valued the enlisted helmet at $850 to $950, and the officer's helmet at $1,000 to $1,250. Seller hoped for $2,000, but after some negotiation, they agreed on $1,050 for both. The seller left, likely unaware of the true value of the helmet, and went to the blackjack table. How can one let go of a cannon? Answer. Nobody can, especially not when it's about this British mountain cannon. All I can say is that it looks pretty amazing, and I can't wait to see if it fires. So that's the cannon. Yes, sir. So this is what you brought me out here to see. Um, yeah, it's a mountain cannon, which means that it's designed to be put on a bunch of mules. So basically, it's a cannon you can disassemble. So you could literally like take it to the top of that mountain up there and just rain down terror and hell and damnation. You know what I mean? When the owner asked for $50,000, they called in Alex, the expert. He determined it's authentic and ready to be fired. Wow, that is good looking. Um, and so you can certainly buy it if you like it. Um, there's nothing legally stopping you from doing that. Yeah. Oof. I mean, the board's really nice. It's maintained well. There is pitting, but you can still see all the lands and grooves quite crisply. Let's do it. I'm down. I'd love to shoot it. Fire in the hole! I got to admit, mega cool. Okay. Mega cool. So tell me, what is this thing worth? I think in this condition, doing what it can do and, and how beautifully restored it is, anywhere 35, 40,000. Okay. Before he took matters into his own hands and closed the deal at 25 grand. Don't you love a happy ending where everybody wins? Joe brought in some rare Pokemon collectibles, including two uncut sheets of holographic cards from the original base set. Tell me a little bit about this. So I have two uncut sheets of hollow foil Pokemon cards from the original base set. These sheets were likely from the starter decks and included cards that would normally be cut for gameplay. One sheet featured the well-known Macham card. Joe acquired these sheets from another collector after a long search. They showed some aging from their 1998 production, but they were still very impressive. Most people, when they have these sheets, it's the kind of collector that doesn't let it go very Correct. often. Yeah. Is there a little damage here? Oh yeah, nothing bad, but it being from 1998, there is some creasing on it. These are really cool. I am asking for $30,000 for each of these uncut sheets. Okay, let me have Matt come in and see what he says about that. I just don't see uncut sheets that often. Right. Joe hoped to sell each sheet for $30,000, but after inspecting them, Chum Lee offered 11000 for both. I would like to buy them both, but for $11,000 for the pair. But I think because of how rare they are and because there's almost no one else selling them, the lowest that I would be willing to go for this sheep is probably 20000 On the Machamp, I would drop it down to probably the eleven that you said for both. Okay. Well, that's a little bit out of the price range for me, but I appreciate you bringing them down. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no problem. Corey and Chum Lee brought in Brett to appraise a set of vintage skateboards. The collection included silkscreen boards from the mid to late 80s with a Tony Hawk claw board featuring Metallica art. I see some good and I see some better in here. It looks like a uh, little mid 80s to late 80s stuff. You got a Tony Hawk claw board. Uh, that probably would have been his third graphic, maybe fourth. The plus head Metallica art. That's a standout piece right there. Somebody could buy this just because they're a plus head fan and it had nothing to do with the skateboard. Brett carefully looked over the collection and revealed that some boards might be reissued. Trying to sell this thing key gun <laughs> key and a gun the bad neighborhood <laughs> paid 40 bucks for it okay never seen key gun it was the first gun with a trigger fill this full of gunpowder put their little rope in there i can't understand why it's on a key how old do you think it is it's 1600s iron will rust rust will turn black i'm pretty sure this thing is genuine i don't know what it's worth do like it a lot rick wants to know the price of this key gun and makes a deal right away so what do you want for it 1100 out no i'm paying 200 bucks yeah, how about 500 no i go like 200 bucks i just 50? Don't know enough about it. All right, what the heck? All right, let's go do some paperwork. Air Force clock from the Cold War era. From my uncle, who was an Air Force mechanic. Took it out of some plane that he worked on back in the Cold War days. This is what is known as a universal clock, really. It went in all sorts of aircraft. The clock is still functional, but the old man wants to be careful with how much he spends on items that are not in a high demand. But this clock is not in high demand, so I'm not going to break the bank to buy it. What are you trying to get out of it? Three hundred dollars. Be a buyer about one hundred and fifty dollars. Middle at two fifty. I'll go to two and a quarter, but I ain't going no higher than that. Yeah, I could do that. 
Go write it up, Chomley. This item was given to him by Pope Francis. I have a commemorative medallion that given to me by Pope Francis. Pope Francis, coolest of all popes. Okay, this maybe looks like when the Pope did something significant, the Vatican and the Pope, they would hand these medals out. So where did you get this? My father, World War II photographer. In 2017, the Pope discovered my dad's work. My father passed away. He presented me that medal. Oh, wow. How much are you looking to get for it? Like five. Thousand. Probably better off keeping it. You can find thousands of them in the forty to seventy-five dollar price range. This is not for me to buy to try to resell. The story you have much more valuable, much more sentimental. You do appreciate you bringing that in. You got it. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank All right. You. I've got a um, Lamborghini dash clock. Would have been a lot cooler if you brought in the car. <laughs> so what can you tell me about it? These were uh, made by Briquet, 1990s. It was a big deal when it came out. The first Lamborghini cars hit the market mid-60s. For the guy who's got everything, ultimate status symbol. How much did you want for it? Rick asks the price, and Chumley makes another comment which infuriates the seller. Well, I was thinking around three grand. They don't sell like the watches do. Appreciate, just like the Lamborghini. <laughs> I don't think he's funny. Rick tries to negotiate the price, and after some bargaining, the deal was a success. I'll give you two grand. How about 25? How about 22? 24. I'll go 2,300 bucks. Okay. Deal. I like brought you three real treasures. The owner shows a painting from a 1430 book, Book of Hours. First one, a painting from the evil Book of Hours from about 1430. Probably the most popular book in the Middle Ages. Very, very important because they were literally done by hand. So the big question, how much you want for it? $12,000. Next up is another book, The Book of Games by Ed Hoyle. 1796, the first book on card games printed in America. Whist, quadrille, piquette, backgammon, chess, billiards, and tennis. Just like the leave, $12,000. You're leaving the best for last. Letter signed on September 15th, 1792, in George Washington's hand, having to do with the Whiskey Rebellion. And it would have been originally folded and then, you know, flattened out. Rick asks for the price of the letter and decides to get help from his expert friend to come up with an appropriate price for the items. How much? 45000 The condition really scares me, though. So let me go give a call and get him down here, and we'll go from there. Okay. And the price is? Be about $20,000 on it. I'm just gonna pass on that. These two right here. The illuminated leaf. Yeah. And the book. Best prices. For 20. 16,000 for the pair. 19. 18,000 is a fair price for the two of them. We got a deal. I'll send you a check. And when you get it, you can send me these. Okay. I have a set of rare, unproduced hair bear cousins. Corey asks for an offer and invites a friend to fix a price for the items. What are you looking to do with them? I want to sell them. Any idea how much you're looking to get? These are the only ones known to exist. I was thinking for the collection, five grand. Do you mind if I have a buddy come down? Not at all. The expert suggests a price for the bear collection, and Chum attempts to negotiate the price with the owner. I assume you guys asked me to come here to give you a value? I have no idea what these could be worth. Getting 1400 for them. The pig is a little bit different. That's a much more rare toy. You'll have no problem getting $3,000 for it. Hopefully that helps you out. Thanks for coming Thanks, in. Thanks, John. Corey. He gave you a number, $4,400. That's going to be a little too high. How about 22? Uh, spreading love. 3500 How about 31 All right, you got a deal. Everybody loves magic. Magic prototype cards, I think they might be of value. Chum and the man discuss the significance and background information about the prototypes and their rarity. Here. It's pretty cool to look at the prototypes next to the finished cards. Little baby blowing fire. When the card came out, it was mud with a dragon. <laughs> that was developed in the 90s. So I see a lot of good stuff here. Unicorn summon, and over here we have the unicorn which looks like it turned into the iron root tree. I had so many of them here. I'm looking to sell just the prototype. Okay, how much are you looking for? 25,000. I just don't know what this is worth. Rick, Chum, and the man visit an expert to appraise a price tag on the prototype cards. Stamp is right, print looks right, collection of all these together. These are authentic. So these are collectible? That's the magic question, isn't it? These are very collectible. I would roughly say about 400 bucks a piece. You're asking $25,000. Don says they're worth 10,800. Would you take 6,200? Finally, the negotiations begin. Do you think we could do like 10,500 maybe? Well, yeah, in that case, I'm gonna probably have to pass. 7,500? I think uh, I'd probably actually have to hold off. Sorry. I got something for you. Davey F and Deals, what's up? <laughs> the oldest samurai sword you've had in the shop. 
He also brought in the paperwork, which was written in Chinese. The owner owns a small car dealership and took this sword in on trade, adding that he needs to turn it into cash immediately. Rick asks the man how much he wants for it. How much you want for it? $18,000. $18,000. Do you know how to open this thing? You gotta push a button to push the pin out. I didn't really pay much attention. <laughs> Not the brightest move, but typical Davey had no idea anything about it. Luckily, I have Rocco, best weapons guy at the store, specializes in swords. Oh boy. Yosha Sugu. He was a prominent sword maker. Pretty well known. He made a really good sword. This fifteen to twenty thousand dollar sword. Told you. <laughs> right on, guys. Thanks, Davey. What do you think? So I'll give you ten grand for it. Eighteen. Ten grand. I mean, I'll go like twelve grand. I gotta resell it. Well, let's trade something. Samurai sword, eight grand. That's like the best I could do. All right, you got a deal. It'll stay in the family, you know that. It's a 1949 Hudson Commodore 8. The old man met Guy, who wanted to sell his 1949 Hudson Commodore. Rick and the old man both admired the car's classic design, original hubcaps, and its historical value. Camp in this thing. Hudson was a big manufacturer, son. They were super big in the NASCAR. I mean, it looks really straight. I mean, right in here is usually where you find rust. This is where it, like, just collects. I think it's in really good shape. Oh, yeah. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed with it. I mean, it looks in great shape. How much are you looking to get out of it? 35000 Ouch. No. Do you mind if I have someone come down here and take a look at it? That would uh, be absolutely fine. To determine its worth, they called in Danny for an appraisal. So what do you think it's worth? I think in her present condition, which which I would say is really, really nice, she has a few little minor cosmetic issues. I don't think they're a big deal. I would safely put this car at a solid 25 grand. How much do you want for this thing? Well, I guess I'm thinking 25. <laughs> <sighs> Can I give you 20 grand for it? You got a deal. All right, 20 grand. This man brought in an old rare gem to the store. This gem, according to the owner, is worth about 40 to 50 million years old. What I have is a piece oh. of Baltic amber with a tarantula in it. GIA, they are the world's foremost authority in gem grading and, and gem identification. If you want, you can pay for us to send it. Well, that sounds good, I'll do that. It eventually turned out to be a disappointment. So what do the test results say? They say it is plastic. What? Classic. This sucks. A customer brings in a spy camera. I brought in a 1950s German spy camera. Where'd you get it? It was actually uh, given to me from my mom, given to her from her father, who was in the military in Germany. You adjust these little dials here. You open it up, it opens up the shutter. Then you snap your picture, and it loads that photo right onto the film. This isn't a super valuable camera. The seller offers a price. What do you want for it? I was looking to get about 100 bucks for it. It's old, antiquated technology. I'm not going to be able to get any film for it. Okay. Somebody engraved something in there right there and removed. For me to buy something and say, serial number removed. Those are the three biggest red flags I can put into my computer system that there possibly is. I'd say it'd be worth about 50, 60 bucks to the right guy. But with all this on there, it makes it completely illegal for me to have anything to do with it. So I appreciate you coming in, man. Hey, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you very much. Very, very old, very rare coin. OK, how'd you get it? I think it was purchased in auction 30 years ago. Made trade really easy between those cities. That's one of the parts that gets confusing with these coins is dating them and figuring out which city it came from. The big ones like this, there's not a whole lot of them. Can be worth a lot of money, from $10,000 to $100,000. There's 500 fakes for every real. I imagine it's pretty rare. It could be worth a big chunk of change. Rick asks for a price and makes another assumption after taking a closer look at the coin. Is it real? Wow. A Syracuse decadram. If this is real, this is a home run. This is a chariot scene. So is it real? Let me take a look. Okay, I have news. It's absolutely genuine. All the features line up. Great metal quality. Gas counterfeits have a soapy look to them. The expert suggests a price for the item, and negotiation begins. This one looks to me like a solid $50,000, almost right on the mark. He set the price, so. Uh, no, I mean, I, I'll give you 35 grand for it. You're not leaving anything on the table. We can meet in the middle somewhere. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 40 grand. 40,000 is fair. All right, cool, man. This is great. Do I get one of those big checks? No. <laughs> hey, good. How are you? I have a rare first impression classic novel and of Green Gables. Rick asks where he got this book from, and the owner states that he got it at an estate auction. Lucy Maud Montgomery went to school to be a school teacher. One day, she ends up writing this. Multiple publishers all gets rejected. It's all about a orphan girl in Canada. Adventure. I know this is a very collectible box. How much do you want for this? $18,000. No idea if that's a good price or not. Let me give a friend of mine a call. That's great. Scale of 1 to 10, it's around a 6. OK. Better than average, but it is not great. What do you think it's worth? 17500 500. Sounds about fair. What would be your best price? How about 14,000? How about 8,000? I don't know if I'm going to sit on it for a long time. Would you go 10? 
Nope, 81. 85? 83? 84. You paid five bucks for it. 8,400. We'll do 8,400. Thank you. I wasn't sure whether or not I could legally sell it. It's a tortoise shell. <laughs> Where in the world did you get this? I bought it at a pawn shop. It's drawn to it. There's a very limited amount. People are used tortoise shell for everything. Combs, sunglasses, all sorts of stuff. The trade in tortoise shell was banned. Never anything like this. So if I can verify this is old enough and legal to own, an extremely rare find here. You guys would bring it back from the Pacific for a lot of money. OK. You know? It's illegal to own. Any idea what it's worth? I don't think you get in any trouble owning it. I don't know selling it. You could probably get some money. It's kind of a tough one. There's people that have done 10 months of in-house arrest, paid like 20 grand in fines. That's what I would be concerned with. Rick isn't taking risks and sadly says goodbye to the seller. What do we got? Robbie the Robot, movie Forbidden Planet. It's no R2-D2, man. So where'd you get this thing? And an estate sale, 55 years old, an icon in toy robots. Every MGM sci-fi movie used the same robot, kind of a Hollywood legend. His first appearance, Forbidden Planet. He even had a cameo in Gremlins from the 80s. The owner starts the robot. Corey doubts that buying this item is a good idea, but he decides to go with the flow. Back in the 50s, were made by hand in Japan. Copyright laws, they, they called it mechanized robot. The actual Robbie the Robot for the American market. No, copied off Robbie the Robot from the movie. So what I would like to know, any American toy maker out there made Robbie the Robot? No. And I should trust you because... Same way I'm trusting you. Any idea of what you're looking to get out of it? Let me call a buddy of mine down. It's something I'd have to know before I... Sure. Corey mentions his concerns about the robot to the expert, and an appropriate price is suggested by the toy expert. It's a million dollar question. What are they selling? So what's it worth? About 2200 Give me 1600 The $800 range. $800? And I'll sleep just fine not having it. Not a fast sell. This is not a fast sell? I'll go 1000 1500 It'll sell for over two grand. 1100 bucks. 12 and we got a deal. 1100 All right, I'll take it. All right, deal. Sell my Pokemon card. Is this an error card? Uh, yeah. Extremely rare. Gas error Pokemon card. Both sides are printed on one side of the card. It definitely should have been caught in quality control. Chumley asks the price of the card. So how much are you looking to get for it? $4,000 for it. Okay, uh... The price shocks Chumley, and he calls an expert to validate the price and the item. Be careful with some of these cards. You know, these errors are worth a lot of money. So the fact that this, you know, avoided the fate of getting pulled out of production, miracle survival right there. You can have error cards that are very common from $5 to $10 a piece, all the way up to $100,000. The expert deems the item authentic and sets a lesser price for it, which slightly upsets the seller. Now take a look at it real quick. The intricate details here are just all there. What kind of value do you think this has? $3,000 I think is a fair, fair value. I think that's a little bit conservative. He thinks it's worth about $3,000. I'd be a buyer at $2,000. What do you think? Yeah, half of what I came in here looking for and... What about $2,300? If you could go to maybe $2,500? I think I'm comfortable at $2,500. <laughs> sounds $2, great. $2,500. Cheers. Sounds good. So it's done by M.L. Snowden. Got it from a former in-law. It's different. I sort of like it. She's been doing this ever since she was a little kid. Her father was a pretty famous sculptor. Some people like a little bit more traditional. She is a really famous artist. Even though I'm not familiar with I've seen a lot of Snowdens before and a lot of money. I mean, how much were you looking to get out of it? $50,000. I'll give you 20 grand. Deal. I'll take it. Whoa, 20 grand. All right. I just massively overpaid for this. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously thought I'd walk out of here disappointed. I'm very happy with the 20 grand. No expert is called in, and Rick makes a fortune thanks to that. Rick shows the sculpture to Chum and Corey, but they are not huge fans of it. The hell is this? What'd you pay for it? $20,000. Why? No one's gonna buy this. Your dad just bought it. Yeah. Have fun with that. I'm out. No. Dude, I don't want to touch Just pick it off, grabbing its legs. Customer brought in a book for Rick to check out a first edition book by Mark Twain. We have a first edition of a true story by Mark Twain. That is really neat. It's actually a monologue from a real slave. I've seen his works go for obscene money. It's a magazine that's a first edition. I'm just not sure on this. Okay, how much are we looking to get out of it? Nearly impossible to find, 2,500. Really like to call someone in. Sure, that'd be fine. So what is it worth? Collectible world, not as sexy as books. <laughs> A place under a hundred dollars. Well, I don't know if I agree on that. Obviously, we're not going to do any business. Thanks for bringing it in, man. It's kind of disappointing. The man enters the shop with a shirt and a signed mask. Mankind mask signed by Mick Foley. I have a vintage WWE dude love shirt. Chum, there's some wrestling stuff over here. Chum is very enthusiastic about the items, and he knows a lot about Mick Foley. When you take in Mick Foley, you have to take in all of his personalities. He first wrestled as Cactus Jack in 1986 in a pro wrestling circuit. In 1996, he came to the WWE, and he rebrands himself into Mankind. 
I mean, this guy is one of the best hardcore wrestlers ever. Rick asks for an offer. How much you want for these? For the autograph mask, I'd like 200. For the vintage shirt, I'd like 300. The shirt looks a little bit different of a color than the one he would have wore in the ring. This isn't the one that mankind would have wore because he had his own hair. It's got his signature on it. Chum surprises the seller and Rick by inviting Mick himself to the shop to identify the items. Look who it is. <laughs> mankind, AKA Dude Love. So this gentleman here had this really cool dude love shirt. The original mask was made out of leather and it was custom fitted to my face. They would not have been sold at the events. Mick takes a look at the mask and the shirt and both turn out to be legit. This looks legit. One of the first dude love shirts. The negotiation continues after Mick leaves. About 200 for the pair. Can you do any better? 210? It's worth just me keeping it at this point. All right, well, anyway, if you change your mind, come back in. OK. We have the most important piece of jewelry by a Las Vegas icon, Liberace. I mean, the guy was pretty amazing. My grandma loved Liberace. So where did you get this? I got it at an auction. Liberace was a huge celebrity in his day. Maybe. The owner also brought a picture of him, Liberus wearing it, and a document. Here's a picture of him wearing it. And here's just a picture of him in front of the piano. See, he wore some suits. Oh, wow. Rick then asks how much the seller would like to sell it. I'm looking for 25,000. I don't see 25 grand here, I just don't. I see 10. How much you get it for an auction? Uh, I didn't want to disclose that. 10 grand, I think it's a fair offer. Yeah, I can't do it. Well, thanks for bringing it in, man. Okay, thank you. Love it. Rick is stunned at what this item is. The owner explains that it is a nuclear weapon cover. Rick is astonished by what the man brought to the pawn shop today. A thermonuclear weapon covers. Thermonuclear weapon cover. Holy Thermonuclear weapon means it was a hydrogen bomb, correct? The building of the nuclear bomb was the biggest project in World War II. In the early 50s, they figured out how to make the thermonuclear bomb, which is like a thousand times more powerful. It's pretty rare that apart from a thermonuclear weapon comes into the pawn shop, but the plaque says it is. It's cool. Finally, Rick takes it to an atomic testing museum to be checked out by an expert for its legitimacy. Yes, we'll have to find by trying it out. They had to cover it getting ready to be loaded. So basically, if this cover fits this bomb, it's authentic. Yeah. Fits perfectly. <laughs> How much do you want for it? 800. Will you take 300 bucks for it? 700. We just meet in the middle at 600. That's even above the middle. Go in the middle, 650. Six and a quarter. We got a deal. All right. Knew that it was going to be a good day for me. I think it was the uh, salesman sample. He went from farm to farm. Weird. This was like the first gasoline motor that was commercially used. They started making these in the late 1890s. Farmers absolutely loved these things. Yeah. Really super simple design, and it builds up a charge. You do know about these. Can we fire it up? We can fire it up. <laughs> they even fire up the engine to see it working. Love this machine. But do you know how much these completed models cost? I have the faintest idea. They talk about its price, and a deal is struck in the end. I would like to pay 1500 bucks for it. Far from a new model, I need to resell it. Can we move here to 2000 I'll tell you what, I'll give you 1800 It's more than a fair price. That's LB. Okay, okay. thanks a lot, man. Um, let's go do some paperwork. This is a Spanish stamp here. This is like the Royal Crest of Spain. I got that from my grandfather when he died. I know a little bit about the coin. I mean, it's eight escudos. Um, it was from Lima, Peru. They had like the worst mines in the world. Coins back then were weird. The size didn't have to be exactly correct. It just had to have the right amount of gold, the right weight, and the right purity. The expert is here to evaluate the piece. From everything I can see on this one, I'd say it's it's absolutely genuine. Okay. So what do you think this is worth? You have 18,000 on it. Okay. Sounds like 18,000 to me. No, I don't. Why would we give you 10 grand for it? How about 12? How about 10 grand? No, I can I could take it somewhere else. How about 10 5? I could I could pack it up and go. I would I wouldn't take anything less than 11,000. 11,000. 11,000. Okay. What exactly do we have here? There's a big flashlight. Infrared heat seeker for the Sidewinder missiles. Should I call Homeland Security now or? So this was attached to the F-4? Yes. So where did you get this thing? My father used to do military surplus bidding in the 70s and 80s. Okay. As he's loading them into the truck, these were inside. Rick asks for some paperwork to make sure the item is okay to keep. A copy of the board's decision on your owning this. It looks like it's good to go. Apparently you own this. It's been decommissioned. Yes. I believe they're totally safe. But this was Cold War technology. All kinds of people I could sell it to. Aviation collectors, technology geeks, 
is this thing what she says it is, or if it's legal to buy. The expert couldn't fix a price for the item, but the owner does have a price in mind. Is there any collector value for this thing? It's in good shape. Uh, no one really has one. Commercial value, nothing. I'll be honest with you. How much were you looking to get out of this? About $3,000? No. Um, I just don't know what to say. I'm, I'm thinking 500 bucks. It's a real shot in the dark. Well, 750 is out of the question. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll go 550 bucks. Hmm. Okay, I'll take 550. Even if I don't sell it, I'm just as happy to sit on my shelf. It's awesome.